Hey everybody, it is Kyle here from Unboxed Autos, and today we have my good buddy, Eric Stafford from Car and Driver. He writes for them. He's been there for quite a while. Yes, he's pretty old, so he's, he's been around the block. Big three zero. Yep. And we are here in the 2021 BMW 4 Series Convertible, more specifically, the 430i Convertible. It has been fully redesigned for 2021. New interior, new exterior. So a lot of updates. Definitely a lot of a lot of cool stuff. We went to a soft top for 2021. Yes. Um, big weight reduction, which I think is fantastic. And uh, we'll get more into that and how it sort of relates to uh, the car overall in a little bit. Uh, but Eric, why don't you tell us a little bit about the specs on the bad guy right specs here? Specs from the uh, two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder, mm -hmm. uh, 255 horsepower. 295 pound-feet of torque at a lowly 1550 oh. RPM. <laughs> Very good. So, it gets off the line quick. Yes, yes. This is the all-wheel drive version? This is the rear-wheel drive version. Rear-wheel drive yep. version. Okay, this well, you can also version. get it with all-wheel drive. Yes. So. Yes, so that's great. And, you know, I actually really like that they went to a soft top. I think soft tops, in my opinion, over the past, like, eight years or so have really improved a lot. I remember driving soft tops, you know, like five or six years ago. It's like always like super loud inside. They're like kind of clunky, and they're this is like if you feel how like you wouldn't know it was a soft top yeah. from the inside. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't know. And even on the highway, when you're driving at speed, it just sounds like a regular coupe inside, which is really impressive. So, yeah, what what do you think uh, some of the main competition for this car? Uh, definitely A5, which you can mm -hmm. get as a coupe or a convertible. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about Q60, Infinity Q60, mm -hmm. although not sure it's modern, like contemporary rival. Right. Uh, we obviously have the C-Class. You can get coupe, sedan, cabriolet. Mm -hmm. um, I think, honestly, in this in this segment, yeah. I don't think there's any other coupe convertible body styles that you yeah, can get. It's like a pretty, it's a pretty compact segment, and mm -hmm. it's a pretty specific clientele that buys yeah. this car. I think a lot of people are probably buying this car as probably like a third car, a lot of times is like a tool around car, like a fun car. Yeah, definitely. Especially the convertible model. Maybe, maybe not so much the coupe model, but definitely I feel like the convertible is definitely someone who already has probably an SUV, another car, yeah. and they just want another car to have some fun in. No, I so, would agree with that. Yeah. Yes. Now, let's, I'm going to start driving here for a minute, but let's talk about the 430i. So the powertrain here, this is the base powertrain. I think it has enough power to be fun. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I believe the zero to 60 time is probably right around six-ish seconds, somewhere in there. And... Fun fact, a little okay. pitch for the uh, okay. car and driver crowd. I think okay. we tested one with all wheel drive at okay. 5.2 to 6. Really? So, okay. pretty quick, a little uh, quicker than the manufacturer estimate. Okay. Just common. Um, but there's no doubt, like, this doesn't feel like a base powertrain. Yeah. And I remember when I first drove the 3 Series after they had just updated it, um, I remember being like, this is just because it, it just debuted with the um, the same four-cylinder powertrain as this before the straight six came out. Yeah. And I was driving it, but I didn't realize that. And I was like, this is actually really quick. The transmission is super well calibrated. Yeah. As you were saying, it's probably one of your favorite parts it of is. the car. It's, it's so quick, but also smooth, unobtrusive. Yep. It's just the regular torque converter. There's no dual clutch or anything, but yep. you, you, know, you don't even need a dual clutch in this setup. Yeah, and what's fun too is, you know, the manual shifting in this car works really well, so it can be fun because it's so snappy to react to yeah. you know, gear shifts. You know, a lot of times, manual shifting in cars is not fun because the transmissions are just too slow. Yeah. So the thing about the manual transmission, and I don't remember if it was specific yeah. to BMW, some manufacturers do this, some mm -hmm. don't. When you put it in manual mode and you like hold it to redline, it actually it does won't upshift on its own. Let's see. We'll, we'll test it. Yeah. Right now. Give it a shot feel it like oh it does it does shift so i mean it's not a huge thing and that seemed a lot more generous like it took it all the way up to almost it 7, did. It did. so there was no fuel cut off or anything which yep. just totally takes you out of the experience i mean you can miss a shift in a manual car you can do what you want it's manual yeah so to me a, ma a good like automated manual um with an automatic is when it like actually will didn't like allow you to not yeah. It won't upshift on its own is what I'm trying to say. Right. So this, it was a little bit better, but I still, that bumps me out anytime it, it upshifts for you. Sure. It's like, don't, this is supposed to be manual mode. <clears throat> like, right. if you're not going to offer a manual in this car, which they don't, unless you get an M4, mm. it, you know, just let me experience the manual. What's the, yeah. It's not going to hurt the car, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. So. Yeah, I feel like I'll, I agree with you. 
But to be the devil's advocate here for a second, I feel like a lot of people driving this car are probably in their like 50s, 40s, 50s, ages, and at least at least maybe probably older than that actually. <laughs> and um, if they are in manual mode and they and the car's not shifting or they're trying to you know like they're probably gonna be like, what's happening to my car? Like something's wrong with it. It's not like it's it's at red line and, and it's like doing something weird. That's, that's my Well, they excuse. better slow the F down <laughs> and figure out how the car works. Because if you can't figure out that the car isn't shifting and it's stuck in gear like that, maybe pull over and consult uh, the owner's manual. All right. A point taken. Mm. My thought is most use cases, you're going to be putting yeah. it in manual mode because you, you want to shift gears. I got gears. a racetrack or even. Yeah, yeah. Don't, mm. don't take away my, sh- like, don't make take me learn away. how to shift. Let me enjoy it. That's right. Otherwise, I, I just don't even do it when I find that it's shifting for itself. So, fair enough. It's my little diatribe fair on enough. automated fair enough. manuals. Fair enough. So, anyway, let's jump over to styling on this car. The exterior styling on this car. Do you know what I love about the exterior styling? What's this that? Car? It's not in any way polarizing. It's not, huh? No. Oh, okay. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves it, and everyone's in agreement <laughs> that it's the best looking BMW ever yeah. to hit the road. Um, I don't know what I think of it, to be honest with you. I love the updated rear end. I think the rear end looks really nice, really crisp with those wraparound LED lights. They're they're thin, and again, they come nicely, you know, into the side bumper, wrap it around. I think the rear deck looks looks really nice. Now, the front of the car has received a lot of attention. Probably the most attention in recent memory that I can ever remember of a car as far as exterior styling goes. It was like, whoa, wow. This is where I blame myself as part of the media is to be a social. Because to me personally, I think it's a, a it's much ado about nothing. Like, you, you, there's a lot of cars on the roads that you say I don't like. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's very subjective. Some cars you can agree are pretty universally attractive. Mm-hmm. You know, some I think most people go, yeah, yeah, I don't love it, but I like it. Yeah. This car is not one of them. This one is different. It's extroverted in the front, <laughs> really. Everything else about the car not extroverted. Yeah. Very subtle. It's very. It's, it, it's a it's sporty looking. The stance is really well good on this car. Um, I don't think it's particularly take the nose away. I don't think it's pr- particularly distinctive, mm-hmm. but I do think it's a good looking car. Um, as far as the, as the whole grill controversy, if you will, it's just like it's that old man get off my lawn. Like I'm upset because it's different. Like you know how many cars are out there with just like look at everything from Hyundai. Like wow, look, it looks so different and crazy. Yeah, okay, cool. Like, still, not a lot of people would agree that's polarizing yeah. as well. But there's not some sort of outrage about Hyundai doing something different. But because it's a BMW, because it has this established tradition, it's like, mm, you know, the grill's too big. Oh, the Hofmeister kink isn't there. It's like, all right, things can evolve, can change. It doesn't mean those things still don't exist. It's just for me, if you don't like the grill of this car. Then don't buy it. <laughs> I mean, really, if, the car, if it's that, like, <clears throat> repugnant to you, then don't get it. That's not yeah. for you. But something tells me if you really do appreciate BMW values and what, you know, the, the beautiful powertrain, um, interior is really nice, all those different, the, the things that are unique to BMW for its own brand, you're going to like this car. It's not going to be the grill. Yeah. And I personally, with the M4 and the <coughs> M3, I think it looks awesome. Like, that's just, I really think it looks good. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a very polarizing element for sure. I think it's, don't get caught up in the, Everyone wants to make a big deal about the grill, so I'm gonna decide that I don't like the car. Right. Like, test drive it, go experience it, and then if that's still a reason to not buy it, then you don't you sure. want the car. And I, I like your point about, uh, you know, it's different and how I, a lot of other brands we encourage, like, oh, that's so different, so that's cool because it's different. Yeah. And BMW does something kind of like, intense and people are upset. So, yeah, I, I can appreciate that. And I don't necessarily, not like it. I'm just kind of undecided. I, I guess I'm yeah. not quite sure. I think it actually looks really good on the M models because yeah. they're so big and aggressive, and especially in like a nice yellow, like that that deep yellow color that they yeah. have. Yeah, no really doubt. Sharp. And I've a lot of people have said, you know, get the get like the with the M models particularly, mm-hmm. get a black car, mm-hmm. and, the, and the grills are mm-hmm. you know the uh, strakes in the grill are black as well, so it doesn't look as much. So like yeah. that's a, a quick workaround, I guess, if you're offended. By yes. It. Yes. Yep. So, well, we've talked about the exterior. Yep. Well, one thing that's less polarizing is the interior on this car. Yes. Yes. I think, you know, initially, I'm trying to, you know, compare this, imagining, you know, Audi A5 Cabriolet, Mercedes-Benz C-Class, 
Cabriolet. It doesn't necessarily have to be the Cabriolet. They're all the same interior. That's yeah, yeah. so why you get the coupe or not. Uh, I There are certain aspects about this interior I really like. I think that BMW does a excellent job as far as textures uh, on different parts of the interior. There's this really nifty uh, metal trim throughout you know, the dashboard and down here by the control centers, which I think looks really which really neat. Uh, obviously, it really offers a wide variety of different trims. You know, they, are, they can do wood, they can do different just brushed aluminum. Uh, so I think it's nice they have a lot of different options, as you know, most luxury brands do. Uh, but I think they always tie it together really nicely. I do like the I like the stitching uh, up on the doors. You know, this is the premium leather package, so we get uh, you know more premium materials on the interior, and then. Yeah, so I think, you know, it's comfortable. I like the design. It's simple. It's pretty simple. And I feel, you know, that maybe if you're in a Mercedes-Benz, it might feel a little more, slightly more upscale than it feels in the BMW. Um, Audi, I feel like Audi and BMW, as far as the quality and interior design goes, they're pretty similar. I think BMW has a little bit tad more uh, design aspects to it, where Audi is a super modern, like very edgy. You know, and uh, BMW has a little bit more of curvatures on the interior than, per se, Audi. But anyway, that's my opinion. What do you think? I think definitely hit on all the, like, the fit and finish in this car is very well. Like, yes. Very well absolutely. done. It's really a, good. Yes. The trim, the interior trim is always hit or miss, and obviously different people are going to enjoy different things. But particularly this trim that you touched on, it's, it's like a nice mix between sporty and looking like it's actually like of a good quality. Yes. You know, I don't like any of that piano black stuff. One thing that me personally that I do not like is the wood trim mm. in, on like a sporty car. Uh, now if it's yeah. like an S class or something or like yes. a seven series and it's not the gloss, you know, yes. lacquered up wood yes. that yes. I feel like no matter how real it is, it always looks like it's <laughs> a fake veneer. I like that kind of stuff in those vehicles. Same. But in this particular one, this aesthetic is really good. Yep. The thing that I, I like more about, it, I think in this luxury car class, it's Mercedes all the way. I think they do a better job of being a little more intricate with the details. Yes. The knobs, there's like a knurled knobs. Like you get yeah. that on the volume knob, you get that on the rotary controller here. Yep. It's fine. But yep. then you've got some plastic buttons. You've got the, yes. you know, the redundant buttons for the radio stations here, just, yep. you know, the settings and everything. Yeah, it looks pretty old. It's, it's fine, but it's just not as well executed as I think. Like, I mean, honestly, even in the G70, which obviously wouldn't count as a mm, yeah. four series competitor, yep. but in that same vein, it's like all of the switch gear is like, metal yeah it's very you know all there's a lot of attention to detail this car mostly good mm -hmm. still nice but there's some misses sure in, in my opinion and i think that with this car and bmw i'm sorry bmw audi and mercedes really pull ahead you know maybe you know again we're not comparing this to genesis because they're not in the same class at all but i think the fit and finish on these cars are just a little bit better um in my opinion like how the doors feel when you close them how the door handles pull it's like very sturdy feeling like how the air vent knobs like this is this is a nice you know air vent knob uh construction right here that's just my opinion i'm not sure if you agree with that or not but well i mean i think it would be probably have to spend time with you know, like you said genesis is not a competitor to the four series but three yeah. series it is yeah i think you'd have to you know if you've had a lot of experience back to back with them maybe you you know but i, I think those are things that people might not you just look and go, oh, this looks mm, better. Yeah, yeah. But there is something to be said about interior cabin isolation, mm -hmm. about even the pulling the door handles, you know, the, the door act thudding and how, you know, yep. there are a lot of intricacies that luxury vehicles, like those are the details that are important. And if you're not looking for them, you're just going, wow, I, this or that, it looks good or doesn't look good. You're not really gonna appreciate what you're getting. And right. that's why sometimes you just need to sit in silence in a car, drive it down the road and really listen, wind noise, road noise, this is a fabric top, cloth top convertible. It's really nice and quiet. <laughs> it is it very really quiet. is. No road noise, yes. just a hint of wind noise yes. at what we're going about 60 here. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a luxury vehicle. There's yes. no doubt about it, yep. you know. And it's really impressive too, you know, how just how quiet it is, especially too, you know, we haven't driven this on the highway. Yeah, yeah. But even on the highway it doesn't sound any different than it does right now, you know. Yeah. And I really do like the the soft top uh, for the weight reduction. And, uh, you know, there's really no downside to it, in my opinion. You know, you know so. what? Honestly, and the thing I used to think about when I was younger, looking for, like, again, this I realize this car is not particularly, like, someone wants a sports car. Yeah. You know, it's it's a luxury car with sporty elements. This this trim, and this has the 
M Sport package, yes. which is the variable ratio steering, and then what was the other? The M with uh, the brakes, the limited the M slip brakes, diff. Yes, and then uh, obviously a few styling cues. As yeah, well, yeah. But yeah. So I mean, you, the person buying this vehicle wants a little bit of the enhancements for the sporty driving, but yeah. really, the, you know, it's 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 a style thing. It's a uh, when you really see the refinement in the interior, with especially with the powertrain, like this is more of a luxury car than anything. Yes. Um, yes. It's, so it's definitely airing more on luxury car than it is sports car. Yeah, and I yes. think that's where the four series does well. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're looking to step into the M4, that's a different story. But if you're looking at the M440i, which I yes. don't know the exact price difference off the top of my head, I believe yep. it's fourteen, fifteen thousand yeah, dollars. Yes. Sounds about right. Yep. That's no. That's where this car kind of feels like the, the, any kind of value, and value is a word loosely used with you know luxury vehicles, you start adding options and everything. But yep. I like this car more with this base powertrain in the convertible versus the coupe. I think that's what this car with the four cylinder powertrain is better at than yep. if you switch, you spend more on the more powerful uh, M440i. Sure, I, I'm inclined to agree with you, although I always like more power. But, I know you do. That's yeah, you got a, so you like, got a soft spot for yes. power. So if I, you know, if I was buying this car, which I wouldn't, I would not buy this size of vehicle anyway. So I, it's it's not terribly relevant. But I would get the larger engine. But I also wouldn't get either of them. I just get the M4 uh, coupe. Right. So so again, kind of a moot point. But yes, this this car is a nice balance. Uh, this particular model is a nice balance, and it's fast enough uh, that you're not like wanting more power. So, it, it does a great job yeah. of just being. It's, it's quick, it's responsive, it sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty good, yeah, well, this, you know. Yeah, it doesn't sound whiny or anything. It's just, you know, it's pretty quick on the draw. And yeah, it sounds good, you know. So, I, well, another part of the interior, obviously, is the technology. And I think BMW knocks it out of the park as far as the user interface goes. Uh, the digital instrument cluster is phenomenal. This is across all BMW products. We have the, the map sort of, uh, just really nicely integrated into the display, so it doesn't even look like it's you know a separate. It just kind of all like fits in there together. Something else really cool is the when you're playing like a, a song through Spotify or something like that, it actually loads the album cover if you choose to, like in the upper right hand corner uh, where your RPM gauge is, and it looks like super neat. It's actually like a really cool thing. So that's really nice. And then obviously it has Android Auto, Apple CarPlay integration, so you can have all of that that you want there. And then even when you're running Google Maps through Android Auto, it still shows you turn-by-turn -turn directions in the digital instrument cluster, which is great. A lot of people don't have that capability right now to do that. So that's definitely a nice feature. Uh, we have the upgraded Harman Kardon audio system on this car. I believe it's an $850 Totally option so, yep. and I would definitely suggest that BMW does a, a nice job at having relatively inexpensive options for premium audio systems unless you know you're like in the 7 series there are several different levels of yeah. audio system and like the top one is quite expensive but at least for most of their cars and the optional audio system is normally around $1,050 or 850 and uh, it's a pretty significant improvement in sound. Now, this Harman Kardon system isn't going to blow you away. It's not going to blow you out of the water, but it's extremely crisp, very clear, good bass, even though, uh, you know, there's not any large subwoofer or, any, or anything in here. And, you know, you really get a nice sound even at like that 55, 60% volume level. It's loud enough to where you can hear it. Uh, and of course, in this car too, you want a more powerful sound system because when you have the top down, you're going to need, if you really want to listen to your music while you're driving on the top down, you're going to need uh, to have it obviously up louder. So, you know, and the higher quality audio systems with the higher quality speakers and components, as you turn up the volume, uh, it's not going to be drowning out you know, the quality of the sound, which is what makes a big difference, though. So, yeah. I have one question about the stereo system. Okay. Are the speakers waterproof? I don't believe the speakers are waterproof. Mm. I don't believe so. Right. I don't believe so. Curious about that with the convertible. Well, you know, if it starts raining, I'm just going to put the top up. Well, you will. Uh, I will defer to you on the audio system analysis because okay. I know you are an audiophile. I do like that. Me, personally, I like to go into the sound settings, push up the treble all the way, <laughs> and push up the bass to about halfway. Is that what you do? And I appr appreciate it when an audio system has, like, an equalizer set, you know, set, Yeah, like, this has can, a huge equalizer. I don't want you to get involved in that. No, I don't want to ruin the sound. You're going to mess it up. So, I, like I said, if, if Kyle says it's a good audio system, 
I trust Kyle. You should trust Kyle. Okay. Now, good value. That's I also you like to talk about value. It's a, it's a good value. No, definitely. I I agree with that. I think. Okay. That. Now, what is the stock system? Is there any branding towards like BMW grade six speaker? Are you, you, oh, the stock the, the stock system. I do not know. I believe it is a BMW sort of originated audio system. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm sure they have, you know, relationships with audio makers. So I couldn't tell you exactly the brand of whom they use. I always that. wonder about that when, you know, there's yeah. no, like, the upgraded audio system is, yep. you know, Bose, uh, yes. Armin Kardon or whatever. Yep. But what is the bass system? And yes. Is it one of those things where yeah. it's almost like they need to play it with the crackly speakers in the showroom so people go, ooh, no, I'm going to upgrade right. to the better stereo. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious about yes. that. Yes, no, and that, and that's something that's always hard to, like, really test, you know, because it's, you know, we're in this car now, and, uh, you know, we can't, you know, easily go listen to the exact same song in the bass sound system of this car and be like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, this is way better. I can tell you it's better because I have heard the bass 3 series audio system, and it's actually not very good in my opinion. Here we go. Um, but... That's it's insight. hard to compare. It's hard to compare. That's insight. So, oh yes, and you know what else is insightful is the neck warmers. Now, now is this stolen from Mercedes with their yeah. patented air scarf? I had it on earlier just because I was messing mm. around with buttons, yes. and it got my neck pretty warm. Yes. But you know, with some settings, I wonder. It's like there's three settings. Does anyone ever use the second setting? I either go three or one, but what's the, is, I mean, but there's sort of a general, there's like three is like the general number, high, medium, low. No, I get it, but I think sometimes, yeah, do you I get it? I appreciate, I think it was a Kia product, maybe? Hmm. They had a two-stage, no, I believe it was a Lexus, a two-stage heated, heated steering, steering wheel. wheel, and I'm like, yes. thank you. I either want it pretty damn hot, or not. or hot. I want it just, just a little, lukewarm, yes. and heated up. Genesis also does that, in, at least in the G9P, so. Yeah, I will yeah. say I am disappointed that this uh, example doesn't have ventilated seats. Yes, ventilated seats are missing. Now, I could understand, you know, well, first of all, the heated seat package, like a cold weather package with a convertible car is kind of like the guy that wears a beanie with like <laughs> t-shirt and shorts. It's like kind of a contradiction. Yes. I'm expecting the convertible to at very least yes. come with ventilated seat standard. Yep. And it's fine to offer like heat, you know, neck heaters and sure. heated seats, heated steering wheel in a car like this, which this one all has, yep. because you maybe want to, maybe you live in a four season state like Michigan, like I do, yep. and you want to have the top down in September, but you don't want to be too chilly. Yep. But again, the lack of ventilated seats, just, it's a miss in my opinion, because I don't think the option is very expensive. Yes, fair enough. Well, and it's an option. So if you're going to buy one, you can get it. It's not a problem. We're just, we just don't have it. You know, in this car, which I know you're pretty butthurt about, and I am, and it's only know. it's about principle, it's not mm -hmm. about availability. Yeah, yeah, I could get, I, I'm clearly great deals. I get a stereo mm -hmm. for an extra fifty. Hey, why don't you BMW? Why don't you just package that into the price? Because you know, no one wants that base crappy system. Maybe you save some money on supply costs. You know. There you go. Yeah. Hey, could be, could be. People though, they feel like they're getting something extra. You know, they like, oh, I want that. Well, I mean, I, I think want it, I, that. that's actually a good point. It's like a psychological. Addiction. You get, you get, you know, and I don't want to stereotype BMW driver. So we say X brand buys a vehicle and he's mm. got it, he or she's got it in their driveway. Mm. Neighbor walks by, oh, is that the new so-and-so? Yeah, oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's got lists mm -hmm. off the features that I'm complaining are, are extra cost features. Yes, yes. But I think that there's a valid point to be made about that. Yep. You, you, lower, you give it a lower price and then people have the ability mm -hmm. to make it the way they want. But some things I think should just be part of it. You know what I mean? Yes. You're not gonna leave like beef out of the stew because people want to be proud that they paid extra for it. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Well, then you should just get a Rolls Royce because they basically have everything you'd want oh, yeah, immediately. Yeah, yeah. So you should just upgrade to you that. That's your baseline. Don't, don't, yeah, don't get into any sort of BMW. Just wait until you can afford Order, the Rolls. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Uh, so you, we agree. The media system is excellent in this car. We agree that the infotainment system mm -hmm. is one of the best around okay. because you've got like you mentioned all the great features high res screen and you've got what i think is one of the biggest parts of a good infotainment system myriad ways to interact with it rotary controller touch functions which it's really easy as a driver for you to just reach and touch yep. i know from being married that my wife doesn't like it when the screen is canted towards the driver what we would call driver focused yes. and she has to kind of reach that awkwardly to for controls, you know? She says it's part of the patriarchy. Oh, wow. I don't know about that, but... But what I will say is that the digital gauge cluster 
is an effing mess. You don't like the digital gauge? No, 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 no. I, I think it's fine in that the, the graphics are super high resolution, and I do like, you did point out the best part of it is that the integration of Android Auto, I think Apple CarPlay does the same thing, and I do like how when you scroll through it, the, the you know, the songs or the station or yes, whatever. It takes the album cover. And I appreciate that part of yeah. it. However, I don't like the integration of the map and the gauges. I think um, it looks like a mess. I disagree with you, okay. I, but I would like to have the ability to turn it off, which I don't believe you can. There is, there is. actually. Okay. So All that's right. that is a small point there, okay. but I just think the inverted tachometer and just the way that the like the speedometer is set up, not, not you need your digital speedo there for sure. I just don't like the arrangement of it. It seems counterintuitive. It seems trying to be different for the sake of being different, mm -hmm. and I. Again, it's like the nose. It does not ruin the car for me. And if you hate it that much, maybe look elsewhere. Yeah. However, it's just one thing that I'm just bummed out about. And, I, and in general, I'm bummed out, well, a little aside, I'm bummed out about the proliferation of digital gauge clusters mm. because unless there's something... you Have you driven the new G70 or, or the G... Yes. Are you talking about the one that has one half of it's a digital and the other half is... is uh... let, me, let me rephrase okay. that. Have you driven mm. the new GV70 or GV80 Genesis? Yes, I have. Gen okay, so the gauge cluster in there, mm. how it's this weird, like, kind of 3D, kind yes. of like, you're like, it's digital, but it's something I haven't seen before. Mm. That's the kind of stuff that I like and appreciate. Mm. In this car, it's just boring to me. If you're, you, you like watches, you're a watch Yeah, guy, yes, right? and, I, and I understand where you're gonna go with this. I won't spend too much time yeah. on it, but you buy a vehicle, and then as the price goes up, when you can get a Jetta, when you can get, you can get Civics now with fully digital gauge clusters, yeah. and granted, some are more customizable and configurable than others, but when you get into a vehicle start, that starts to cost above you know, 50, 60, whatever number you wanna put on it, I just feel like it's a shortcut. I feel like if you've looked at any, 80s, 90s, yeah. GM vehicles, yeah. and you saw, whoa, digital readouts. This is gonna look antiquated in a shorter period yes. of time than nicely, you know, put together a gauge cluster with analog gauges yes, analog or gauges, just something yes. super unique about yes. it. So, and I, I think it's cool when companies are able to really nicely tie in analog gauges with. Yeah. I mean, you know what car? You know, is the the older Audis did a really nice they job did a with good that. Job they had those it. really fancy, yeah, uh, the analog dials, gauges yeah, the that gauges. were like turned in a little bit towards you, and they were like super big needles. They looked really crisp and nice. Yeah. And then there's that nice big screen in the center. Uh, I understand how cars are becoming more technological now, yeah. why they're doing this, but I also do miss analog gauges. I'll agree with you on that one. And these would be really cool if this was like a super ornate like. You think of this display as analog. Yeah, like just put right in now, some elements. Cool. You know what actually I think mm. did it really well? Some of my favorite gauges were the, the uh, M2. Yes. I mean, now I again, you're not M2. getting yes. this big yes. display yes. like yes. you're talking about, mm. but what do you need the redundancy from it being mm. right here yes. or right yes. there? Yes. And those gauges were just, they were just awesome. Yes. They're really simple. Those yeah, nice red That's needles. just, again, a diatribe on digital gauges. Mm. I wish luxury automakers would do something different you know mix well, it hybrid you know what you know what the my least favorite one is is the rolls royce they're all digital they're those are the like, most egregious no doubt yeah that's just where like, they're, they're like you like, know you just were like it's a price you can get these digital screens a lot cheaper than yes, the parts and I'm things sure you know so mm -hmm. that's just one little thing yeah yeah you're picking out rolls royce apparently that's today. fine like, if you can't be picked on when you cost a quarter of a million dollars i mean yeah what do you mean half a million dollars isn't the um doesn't the bentega I said Rolls Royce. Mm. Yes, uh, you know you can probably buy Rolls Royce for like three fifty. The Cullinan doesn't start. I think three twenty five. It starts at three twenty five. Okay. Yeah, so and then you add a few million. options, so you're at you're at <laughs> add a few add a few options. You're at seven hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, but yes. Now, lastly, but perhaps most importantly, how does this car drive? How does this car drive? Why don't you have you driven the A five? Yes. All right. How does the A five drive? How, what, and then have you driven okay have you driven the A5 the C-Class and the 4 Series uh, yes okay real quick why don't you tell me um, how you think those drive so what I will say about this particular because I have driven this vehicle mm -hmm. I will say that I do think that BMW vehicles 
are extremely competent, but they're kind of sanitized. Mm. All right, so we're on some back roads here in Michigan, and you know, again, the, probably the most important aspect when you're buying a car that you want to have a little bit of fun with uh, is you know the driving aspect of it. So again, we've touched; it's, it's definitely more luxury than you know pure sports vehicle but it does have you know a nice handling dynamic too i know that eric had mentioned he doesn't necessarily no there's nothing wrong with the steering uh response to this car uh but you know what were you touching on it what were you saying exactly that you know you precisely that you didn't really love about it i think the biggest thing was you know the steering for me and everyone has <clears throat> different pref different preferences when it comes to like steering effort some yeah. people like light effort some people like a heftier effort you know and Brands, automakers typically equate he like a heavier steering effort to sportiness, which I think has like been conditioned into people. No. I think like with any good steering, it needs to do what you want the car to do. And I think a good steering system is communicating to you what the vehicle, what the front tires are doing, and 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 just kind of giving you some sort of feedback. Whether it's a ton of feedback or whether it's just little minute things, I think that's what kind of like makes a good steering system. And I feel like BMW does a really good job of being direct and having very varying levels of effort depending on what drive mode it's in. Yeah. But the default effort's kind of heavy. It's kind of like on center, there's really no like, like you just don't get that feel. It's just kind of, so I think I actually don't mind the the heaviness of it. I, I think sure. that's fine for me. But I do know what you mean. Like just kind of when you're just tooling down the road, it's like just kind of vague a little yeah. bit. It's a little bit vague. Um, but we'll pop in here in the sport mode, and um, it definitely t immediately tightens up, obviously, which is nice. That you know it has a fully adjustable. Uh, you know the dampeners will you know get a little stiffer. Steering effort will be you know increased a little bit. But uh, yeah, you know I. It's it's very precise. It's precise, um, but it definitely feels you know you can feel it feels electronic still. You know it feels yeah. a little bit you know not you know not like a Porsche where it's just perfect. You and know? you know in this class of cars you don't there's not really one that I would say stands far like heads and tails above the the rest. I yeah. think it does come down to personal preference. Yeah, I think. The steering feel in this car is kind of irrelevant with the class that it's in, yeah. but it's one part of the whole piece of a puzzle that I think, to me, the car doesn't do much to get me excited. Mm. I think I really <clears throat> appreciate the ride is firm, but it's not it's, stiff it's at comfortable. all. It's definitely it's firm and comfortable, and I will tell you, you know, around the curves and stuff, you can it's a good it's a good at handling. You know, and the it, thing that again, everyone can have their own preference on what they like to drive but you're watching this video and you care about what we think and i will say that i just don't think that this car is particularly and it's entertaining as far as when you look on the sporty side of the mission i think you switch into it and you drive it quick and you drive it aggressively and you say oh yeah you know that was a fun little romp down the road yeah i think anyone who really has like they want to be engaged they want to actually get a little bit of joy out of driving a car like more than just quick sprints or, oh man, I'm gonna take this corner quicker than the last one. If you're really trying to go and find a twisty back road and get like fulfillment out of it, I don't really think the 4 Series is the car for that. Now, if you yeah. wanna step into the M4, that's a different story, different price range, you know, yes. different skill set. <clears throat> I think you're, I think, I think you summed it up nicely. Like, if you want it to be a little quick, have a nice little romp down there, like, oh, that was fun. That's exactly what this car. Yeah, is. you want the top and down, and the top don't impress down. your friends. And, and I Ooh, think have that. A great time. Yeah, and I think that that fits this car. I I think it's fitting for this car. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. No. Yeah. So. I don't know if I don't know if BMW would have, would appreciate it so much to to not feel like um, there's obviously uh, a yeah. ton of engineering that goes into it. They make some really good driving cars. They really do. The M2 yeah. is a perfect the example of perfect like car. that BMW DNA that's still alive. That when you drive it, you go, man, that car puts a smile on your face. Yeah. This car puts smiles on your face. Yeah. In different capacities. Yes. And so, if you're looking for a sports convertible, sports coupe, I, I wouldn't necessarily call the four series that. I call and, it a luxury. And this is coupe. this is a bigger car too. It's not tiny. You know. It's, no, it's not. It's a long car. And what is nice though about that is there's enough room for people at least not to be super uncomfortable in the back seat. Yeah, you know, I haven't yeah. sat in the back of this one, yep. and I don't recall the last one I sat in, but yep. I remember the 4 Series having like a surprisingly decent amount of back seat. You know, I, I, 
I think in this class, I think they're all about the same A5. Yes. Don't okay. remember how big the Q60 rear seat was. That I feel that like it's the smallest one of, the, mm -hmm. of those group. Yeah. And I don't recall the C class. I think that the A5 might be the smallest. I yeah. think the BMW is somewhere in the middle. I think the C class Cabriolet might be the largest. Yeah. If I, if I had to kind of wager a slight yeah. educating guess. No, I, I think you might be right. <clears throat> but I just think <clears throat> the car definitely to me is, as we were talking about earlier, the car is, it's, it's sanitized. Mm -hmm. and, and as I was saying, like, sanitized doesn't mean bad. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a good thing sometimes. You know, I think you're always going to feel like this car is just, you know, like we said, you want to get into it for a quick spirited session, good to go, but you're going to come right back to Relax. just relaxing and cruising yeah. along. Yeah. So that's this car's modus operandi, if yeah. you will. It might not be what BMW <laughs> wants to be. It's, it can do anything. Well, mm -hmm. there's limits though. Sure. Now, I think probably the most important thing to ask for this car, you know, between the, the A5 Cabriolet, mm -hmm. C-Class Cabriolet, and mm -hmm. this one, which one, since you've driven all of them, I have not driven all of them, which one do you think, it, it might be hard to remember, it's, you know, it's probably been a while, but you know, which one do you feel like is the most dynamic and which one do you feel like is the most relaxed, comfortable ride? So the BMW has the best powertrain. The best base powertrain, the four-cylinder. A5 is only four-cylinder. Uh, C-Class 300, only four-cylinder. Mm -hmm. um, this is the by the hands down the best powertrain. Mm -hmm. This setup is great. Uh, I think that this, I think the C-Class has the best interior. I prefer the C-Class is, in my opinion, when I had driven it, the C-Class felt a little more engaging all the time. Mm -hmm. This is more relaxed. This has the best ride quality. <clears throat> I prefer this over an A5. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, I think it hits all of everything. Technology, mm -hmm. performance, um, styling obviously up in the air. Styling I'll put behind the A5. I, I do think it looks you know, pretty timeless. I like the dimensions of it. So yep. I'll, I'll, I'll put this one further down. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I'm taking this above uh, an A5. I'm probably going C-Class over this though, to be uh -huh. honest with you. Um, you know, especially if you look at like an AMG, a C43, I just think that's like a yes. more exciting um, vehicle, sure. even compared with the M440i. Yes. You know what I mean? So from base model to base model though, this this is one of the better ones, no doubt. And sure. anyone looking for, you know, a classy, but you've got, you know, a tech savvy vehicle, you're going to you're gonna get that with this Beamer. For sure. Yeah, no, I, and I agree. And, you know, I think as tested, I think this one comes in around was it like sixty-two thousand dollars. I think it was or right over one thousand yeah. dollars, and I think the base price on these is around fifty. Right around fifty-three. I think it was. Okay, I was gonna say fifty-four. And that so, I believe yeah. all-wheel drive is. <clears throat> thousand dollar uh, option. No, I was gonna say I really like that this is available in rear-wheel drive. You know, I think our, I'm our. Is the Audi only available in Quattro yes. all-wheel drive? Yep. Uh, yes. And it's the C, I feel like the C-Class is both. I think the C-Class is now only. Oh, I know only for a fact the okay. E-Class is only okay. four-wheel drive now. Okay. And we'll, we'll put the answers to this in the, in the description. But... Uh, Don't fact-check us. This is all yeah. correct. <laughs> and uh, I believe that I like having real drive as an option. This... Really. You know, I I am of the firm believer. I thought it was silly when BMW added all-wheel drive mm -hmm. to the, um, the the convertible version. Yes, I understand why people like the ability to add that, and maybe there's maybe it's someone who's just always wanted the drop-top Beamer Four Series, and they live in a, a place where you know there's going to be seasonal weather. And perhaps those so I, I'm only fine. Their only car. I'm fine with them having it. It's not, <clears throat> but but to your point. It's great that, that you can get it just rear-wheel drive. Yeah. And that's something that competitors like his A5 doesn't offer. Yeah. So. Sure. And, um, yeah, and, you know, speaking to that, I think uh, overall I really do like how this car drives. You know, snappy transmission, good amount of power, 1550 RPM max, you know, torque comes in. Uh, good braking. Uh, steering is decent. The road, road hold is decent. Uh, but we're going to have Eric jump in the driver's seat now and see what he thinks. We set a hot lap on this road. <laughs> Family! No. <laughs> Here I am behind the wheel of the yes, BMW 430i. I thought I'd never get a chance to drive. <laughs> Kyle just hogging the wheel the whole time. I no. guess that means he really likes driving it. I just like driving in general. I mean, I do like driving in general, <laughs> but I prefer to drive 
things that are enjoyable to drive more. Mm, I will say that this is this car is inoffensive to drive for yes, sure, and yeah. the powertrain is is one of the defining features that makes me enjoy it even more because it is literally a snappier right foot away to get no matter what drive mode you're in. Mm -hmm. We're in adaptive right now. It's yep. best, great for all around driving. You want to jump on it. It's ready to go. It's oh, there's a deer right there. God, deer. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's it's a really good it's a really good car and it, it just it just lacks that there's so many adjectives you could use but I don't know if any really are the best word for it that I just feel like it's the whole driving experience in a lot of BMWs I find is cohesive because it's it, it all works really well together. Yeah. Now the level of that cohesion is up for debate. Like I said, the steering feel just inoffensive, I guess, but. A lot of people and people I, you know, respect who have opinions on older BMWs, you know, they really say that there's something been lost in translation. And that for younger automotive journalists, if you will, like Kyle and I, I think if you don't have that point of comparison, you might not understand that. But there is a lot of value in driving different cars. And I forget what the last Porsche you were in. That would be the 911. The 911. Um, yes. Now, there's a great car to really, if you just want a benchmark for great steering, there you go. So, even guys like us who are younger, who maybe haven't driven E30, you know, historical BMWs, if you will, the best BMWs, there's still something to be said about comparison to other vehicles. And 4 Series, no 911, don't get us wrong. But it's just, there are things that you, you can tell about the car that's just, like I said earlier, sanitized <coughs> in a sense that cohesive cohesive sanitation if you will and it just it just it leaves that one like if you just want to take it a little bit forward to get, forward to get some more enjoyment out of it just it just lacks that and full yes, yes. Thing. and it's kind of it, you can feel it's still it's still a heavier car you can still kind of feel you it. can feel you it's can mass feel no it's, doubt it's, you know especially it, it, it's it still performs like it's still oh, okay this is this is good this is nice but you're not going to be whipping it around the corner the corner you can but it will, will be a little bit oh you know it's not as willing to change direction as you might like and yeah. for some people for i think for the demographics of this car I really right. for yeah. the 430i it's 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 all the car you could want and yep. you're going to be if you there's something about my my add is kicked in and i know how much i love bmw steering wheels because they literally feel yes. so good just yes just i the love leather, the leather the contours so, yes the perfect thickness of the rim if you will yep um it, it's 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 like you just take your eyes keep them on the road and just go oh, i feel i do feel secure with the steering wheel i feel like connected to the car yeah it's only when i turn it that i go oh like a spurned lover it's like <laughs> hmm, you know what just something's missing something feels cold right now <laughs> Yes, and I, I can also agree. I absolutely love the steering wheel of this vehicle and all BMW vehicles. Really, I really think they they do a perfect job of balancing the right amount of, of technology at your fingertips. Uh, also, the really great size of wheel. You know, it's not too large in diameter. Uh, it's not too thick to hold on to. It's just a really nice, perfect size. I will I say, I personally think it's a little thick. Ah, okay. But in because the material's so nice and yeah. just like the overall shape. Perfect ten and two place to put your hands if you want. I don't know if you're more of a like twelve o'clock guy, <laughs> kind of like you know. But no, it's it's a really good the, the material quality, the overall design. It's really good. And, yes. Um, and I, I, you know, the the three spoke is, is nice is a nice touch here. With yeah. The, uh, the classic, sport. if yep. you will. Yes. Very classic. classic. Very classic. It's a callback to uh, That's right. earlier BMWs. Earlier days. Although I'm, it might, it might sound like a little man crush on the M2, which is probably because I do. Well, I do love them. Too. Again, a oh. steering wheel, slightly thick, like thinner rim, oh. and fewer buttons, mm. which I also appreciate. Mm. That might be a BMW's best steering. Wheel. I think it is BMW's best steering wheel. Probably. Yes. No doubt. Love that steering wheel. Love that car. Love that car. It's a great car. All right, guys, well, that's all we have for you today. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed our review here and discussion on the 2021 BMW 430i convertible in the rear wheel drive format. And uh, yeah, that's all we have for you today. Eric, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. And uh, hopefully we can convince Eric to come back soon because we know that he knows a lot more about cars than I do, which is always helpful. Oh, gotcha, too. <laughs> and, too nice. um, and yeah, so again, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and we'll probably get back to you.
Thank and you. if you haven't already, yes. smash that subscribe button. Yeah, smash it. Hit it. Touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.